Hi everyone. Oft times when we are considering the Desert Fathers, for instance, we think of that great movement that occurred in the Natrian Desert as something where a number of fairly unsophisticated, though pious and uneducated people went into the desert to try and draw closer to God. And this is very true in many instances, perhaps even for most of those people that went into the desert. But it doesn't hold true completely because there were some absolutely brilliant people that also rejected the world and headed into the desert. One of these, on February 4th, the Holy Orthodox Church celebrates as Isidore of Pelusium. Now, Isidore was someone who was raised in Alexandria to very well-to-do parents. He had all the things that anyone could possibly want growing up in a great city like that. And he was also someone who was very pious in emulating his very pious parents as well. Isidore, after he began his studies, showed himself to be someone absolutely supreme in rhetoric, philosophy, theology, you name it. He was at the top of the class in everything that he did, and he saw great value in these things as well. But because of his upbringing, he also wanted to search for what he believed to be the font and source of all real philosophy, and that was our Lord Jesus Christ. So when he became of age, he left and went into the region of Pelusium, which is about 125 miles outside of Alexandria. And there he was tonsured into the great schema and became a very uh, wonderful monastic who was not only concerned with the things of the monastery and his brethren, but also with the people that were around him. Because of his absolutely incredible knowledge about everything, the egumen there made him the head of the catechumens. And so he instructed the catechumens in a way that we can only imagine considering his knowledge and generally did everything he could as would befit a monk who was active in a monastery. His reputation grew, as such reputations always do. But unfortunately, at one point, another bishop came into the area, and this bishop was more inclined towards building great churches and things like this that was absolutely corrupting to the very nature of the priesthood because Isidore himself had been ordained a priest not long before. Well, Isidore was very concerned about this, and so he fled off to another monastery in a nearby area where he continued his work and spent the rest of his life. Now, we are fortunate in that he wrote on many things, uh, again, dogmatics, philosophy, rhetoric, civil matters, you name it, he wrote about it, and there's over 3,000 pages of his work in this regard. He also wrote many letters to many people. In fact, we have over 2,000 of these letters. And Isidore was in no way a respecter of persons or opinions or offices in terms of whom he contacted. When local governments were doing things that he thought impeded upon the freedom of the people, he would write to them and remind them of their duties before God. When slaves came to him because of fear of their masters, he would intercede with the masters for them and ask that their freedom be granted. He was someone who was everywhere to every person, someone who could be relied upon and who knew what he was talking about. In fact, his greatness is in this regard even comes to the point of when there was a very difficult situation regarding uh, Patriarch Cyril of Alexandria. Now, Patriarch Cyril is, of course, one of the greatest saints of the church, also who left many, many important writings behind him. He was also someone who was uh, the one who helped defeat the Nestorians at the Council of Ephesus in 432 and 433. Well, Patriarch Cyril of Alexandria 
was also the nephew of Patriarch Theophilus. Now, Patriarch Theophilus, unfortunately, is one of the ones who was very upset with St. John Chrysostom, and in fact, under whose reign St. John Chrysostom was exiled and met his ultimate demise. For Isidore, St. John Chrysostom was the be-all and end-all of virtually everything spiritual or regarding the scriptures, which St. Isidore also knew very, very well. And so St. Cyril, who was known to be, quite frankly, a bit of a hothead in many instances, was also someone who was very much against St. John Chrysostom because he believed the things that were brought against uh, John Chrysostom were true, but he did this also because he was the nephew of Patriarch Theophilus. Well, St. Cyril also considered St. Isidore to be a father in Christ to him. They knew each other very well and in fact were related. So St. Isidore would write St. Cyril and say many things to him saying, listen, first of all, your argument with Patriarch John of Antioch regarding the Nestorian problems uh, are getting a little heated and you would do best if you would back away a little bit and try and see this through a more reasonable light. He also went after St. Cyril for his persecution of St. John, even though St. John had reposed. And after many letters, when he pointed out many, many things to St. Cyril about the beauties of the teachings of St. John and how he was innocent in all things, St. Cyril actually had a vision which ended all of this for him and he became a very important uh, defender of St. John Chrysostom. Such are the effects of one holy soul learning to love the Lord and to do all things possible in this life for his sake. Because even though he was a simple priest, and even though he did have a very, very wealthy family, and he turned away from all the wealth that they had for the sake of his monastic efforts, he was someone who did not back down, but chose to use those connections that he had not for his own sake, but for the sake of the church. And in the end, that's exactly what happened. St. Isidore of Pelusium lived to be a ripe old age, dying in the year 450. So he was caught up in the midst of not only the Nestorian heresy, but the heresy of Evtikis and Monophysitism and all the trouble that that brought to the church. He was firmly orthodox, solidly dogmatic, and loved even those that he disagreed with, and particularly St. Cyril of Alexandria, who he did not stop persuading to see St. John Chrysostom in a different light in the truth of what the Lord had proclaimed about St. John. This all came to pass. And so because of St. Isidore, he stands as a bright light in the midst of what was a very confused and rugged time for the church. By his holy prayers, and by the prayers of St. John Chrysostom, and by the prayers of St. Cyril of Alexandria, may we also approach all things in the truth and light of our Lord Jesus Christ. Bye-bye.